Have you ever wondered about projects that seemed like a great idea, but turned out to be massive letdowns? Well, that's what we're diving into today. We're talking about stadiums, cities, airports, science stuff, and even a super tall but totally useless hotel. These projects started with big dreams, but ended up costing a whole lot without much to show for it. Let's dive in and figure out why these mega projects didn't quite pan out like they were supposed to. Brazil's controversial stadium in the rainforest. Now, let's kick things off with Brazil's massive football stadium in the middle of the rainforest. So, Brazil hosted the 2014 Football World Cup, which was a big deal, right? They had to build 12 new stadiums and fix up some old ones, and it was supposed to cost them about $11 billion. One of these stadiums was the Arena da Amazonia in Manaus, deep in the Amazon rainforest. Building it was a real headache because Manaus isn't a walk in the park to reach. They had to ship materials all the way from Portugal and float them down the Amazon River, taking a whopping three weeks. That's a lot of effort and money just to make this stadium happen. Now here's the kicker. After all that trouble and cash, the stadium only hosted four World Cup matches. Yep, just four. And surprise, surprise, after the World Cup, the stadium pretty much turned into a ghost town. The local clubs couldn't fill the 40,000 seats every week, and folks around there couldn't really afford tickets anyway. They tried using it for the 2016 Olympic Games, but you guessed it, only for a few days. Since then, it's been gathering dust and echoes, reminding everyone about the crazy amount of money spent that could have made a real difference in the lives of folks in Manaus. America's largest failed science project. All right, time to dig into America's mega oops in the science department. So back in the day, they had this grand idea called the Superconducting Super Collider in Texas. It was meant to be this crazy huge circular tunnel thing that would be the most powerful particle accelerator on the planet. They wanted to use it to figure out some universe mysteries and all that jazz. Started in 1987, this project got the green light from the big shots. But guess what? It hit a few bumps. First, the budget was set at $4.4 billion. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, it wasn't enough for this monster project. The tunnel they needed to build was massive, over 87 kilometers. Imagine a tunnel circling a whole town. That's a lot of dirt to move. People started questioning if the money could be better spent elsewhere, like on NASA's International Space Station plans. By 1992, the cost had ballooned to $9 billion, and a year later, it jumped to a whopping $11 billion. At that point, they had already thrown $2 billion into digging a 22-kilometer tunnel. But with costs going through the roof, the government said, enough is enough. In 1993, they officially pulled the plug on the superconducting super collider. They filled up those 22 kilometers of tunnels with water, hoping to save what they could. Meanwhile, across the pond in Europe, the European folks got their act together and built the Large Hadron Collider for just $5 billion. It's in a 27 kilometer tunnel in Geneva, and it actually works. And here's the kicker. Parts of the Texas site now host a chemical manufacturing company. So the superconducting super collider was a big idea that turned into a massive wallet drainer with nothing to show for it. A lesson learned the expensive way. Learned the, the new South China Mall. This mall, located in Dongguan, China, was once the largest mall in the world with over 7 million square feet of retail space. However, despite its impressive size, the mall has remained almost completely empty since it opened in 2005. One of the main reasons for the mall's failure was its location. Dongguan is a city in southern China that is not well known to tourists and does not have a strong retail market. This made it difficult for the mall to attract visitors and tenants. Another factor contributing to the mall's failure was a lack of transportation options. While the mall was designed to be easily accessible by car, it was not easily accessible by public transportation, which made it difficult for people to get there. Finally, the mall struggled to attract anchor tenants, or major retailers that anchor a shopping center and help attract other retailers and customers. Without these anchor tenants, the mall was unable to attract smaller retailers, which further contributed to its failure. Overall, the combination of poor location, lack of transportation options, and a lack of anchor tenants led to the failure of the new South China Mall. Despite its impressive size and grand ambitions, it has remained largely empty and unused since it opened. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. It is a massive infrastructure project 
that connects the cities of Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau. The bridge consists of a series of bridges, tunnels, and an artificial island, and it was intended to improve transportation and economic ties between the three cities. However, the project was plagued by cost overruns and construction delays. It was originally scheduled to open in 2016, but it wasn't completed until 2018. The project ended up costing over $20 billion, which was more than double the original budget. In addition to the cost and construction delays, the bridge has also struggled to attract the number of vehicles and passengers it had hoped for. Despite its impressive size and engineering, it has failed to live up to its potential as a major transportation hub, the world's emptiest airport in Sri Lanka. Now, let's talk about Sri Lanka and their attempt at an airport that's kind of like a deserted island. So, back in 2009, after a pretty intense civil war, Sri Lanka thought, hey, let's give our country an economic boost. The big plan was to have a second commercial hub in Hambantota, about 250 kilometers away from the main city, Colombo. They teamed up with China, and together they built a fancy seaport, and then decided, why not add a second international airport in Matala too? Now, a government agency said, hold up, maybe not the best idea. We should just extend the one in Colombo instead. But nope, they went ahead with the plan, and by 2013, the Matala Rajapaksa International Airport was open for business. The whole thing cost them $210 million, with China covering most of the bill. It seemed like a good idea. The airport could handle a million passengers a year, and it was near lots of tourist spots. But here's the twist. The place was in the middle of nowhere, with a small city of just 20,000 people around. A third of them were struggling below the poverty line, so they weren't exactly jet-setting around. Even though it was close to tourist hotspots, the lack of good transportation made it not so great for travelers. In 2018, the world officially declared it the emptiest airport ever when the last airline, Fly Dubai, shut down operations. Critics say it was a bad idea from the start, and they're probably right. The airport's kind of like a ghost town now, with an uncertain future hanging over it. And that's the story of how Sri Lanka's big airport plan didn't quite take off like they hoped. And those are some of the world's most head-scratching mega projects. If you enjoyed our tour of these epic fails, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more intriguing stories. Until next time.